Hello YouTubers, thank you for tuning into my video, an owner's review of the brand new 2019 Elantra GT N-Line. I have purchased this top spec Elantra with the DCT transmission and technology package on Memorial Day of this year, and I have come to believe more and more each day that this was the right choice of a car for me. I did consider, research, and test drive some contenders prior to choosing the Elantra. I considered the Civic, particularly the SI, even though it is not a hatchback, but I already have one, granted it's a prior generation. I considered the VW GTI, and that is indeed a good car, but it did not impress me quite as much as I was led to believe from other reviewers. I considered the Mazda 3, and that was the runner-up. The Mazda 3 is a very special car, especially the interior design but I personally did not at all like the hatchback's black wheels, the huge and oddly shaped C-pillar, the rather dark interior, especially the back seat, and to top it off, the dealer would not give me an out-the-door quote unless I was going to buy the car right then and there. Friendly advice, never purchase a car on the same day that you test drive it. Get a quote, go home, and think about it. I digress. I would encourage anyone looking for a hatchback to give each of these cars a chance, including the Civic hatchback or the Civic SI in sedan and coupe flavors. The tremendous value proposition of the Elantra, the standard features, the excellent price, and the dealership sales process all stacked up made more sense to me over the others. A lot of this is subjective. So let me be subjective and a little objective. And let's dive into the Elantra GT N-Line. The Elantra's rear seat doesn't suffer any loss in quality or materials in comparison to the front cabin. Rear passengers have air vents and an armrest with integrated cup holders. I do wish that there would be a pass-through in the center seat for the time when you need to carry a longer item while still having room for two rear passengers. Instead, you'll have to ask one of them to remain behind to find their own ride home while you come around to the back and let the back rest down in a 60-40 split fashion. If you take note, there is quite a step up from the trunk floor to the folded down seat back. Prior Elantras, or maybe even those in other markets, have a solution to move the trunk deck up to make a level floor. Look for an upcoming video from me to hopefully address this issue in this North American inline Elantra. The inside of this Elantra is just such a nice place to be. It starts with the seat, starting with the construction and the details. It is not a plain seat. The red stitching and checkering along the bolster are beautiful and bring an upscale touch. This trim level offers electronic driver seat controls for up, down, forward, rearward, and lumbar support. This area of the seat is also where we'll get into my first little disappointment and perhaps a contributor for the attractive price of the Hyundai brand, the cheapness of this control panel. If you press and push on it, you'll see that there's very little in the way of structural integrity and mounting support. Climbing into the driver's seat, I hope that you'll agree that this cabin is quite modern, yet simple and elegantly executed. Everything is in a well accessible position and in proper line of sight, including the instrument cluster. Let's talk about that actually. I noticed that the top line indicates the number of miles remaining with the fuel in the tank. I like that. I particularly like the small arrow to the left of the pump icon. It points to the right. I thought that was quite nice to let me know on which side of the car the fuel filler cap is located so I can put more drink into this thing. Wrong. All wrong. I pull into the gas station with the fuel level as you see here. I wanted to top it off so I'd be ready the next day for my road trip with a full tank. The actual arrow to indicate the fuel filler's cap location is obscured by the tank level needle right here. I must have looked like a total noob to any onlookers. Taking a look around, it is a well lit interior. The sunshade will retract all the way to the rear seat, revealing a view of the sky even for those sitting in the back. The sunroof, however, only opens on the front half. Visibility out of the rear window is okay, and the visibility out the side is much better than out of the Mazda 3. The center console features an outlet, but it is quite small. 
There are two cup holders, but they are also on the small side, both in diameter and depth. Good enough for a bottle of water or a small cup of coffee. We have an electronic parking brake and auto hold, which I enjoy very much in the city. The PRND shifter looks like it was stolen from a premium German car. To the left and right of it are the driver and passenger heated and cooled seat controls, as well as a sport mode button. The forward console features an outlet and an auxiliary audio input port. The USB port can be used for charging your devices, as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. The flat area features a Qi charger for compatible devices. The climate controls feature dual zone controls and excellent haptics of the buttons and knobs. A small deviation from the norm is the vehicle's single door lock button just above the climate controls. The tablet-like infotainment is 8 inches across and has large buttons around the outside for your common features, including one customizable favorites button. When reversing, the camera shows a nice picture with dynamic and static tracking lines. A nice touch is that when you are reversing and listening to any media, the car will turn down the volume so that you may focus better on the task at hand. The steering wheel controls seem in line with the industry from what I've seen. We have vehicle controls on the right such as cruise control, adaptive cruise control, and the instrument cluster navigation. The left side features multimedia controls such as voice commands, volume, telephone controls, and some infotainment controls. Let me actually elaborate on the infotainment controls for just a minute. When you're on the station preset screen, the up and down arrows ramp through the list as you see it on the screen. Pressing up decrements the preset selection and pressing down increments the preset selection. However, when you have anything other than this screen active, the up and down buttons flip-flop how they cycle through those presets. The key fob is very nice. It has some heft to it. I wish it had Hyundai's N or N-Line logo on it to distinguish it from the standard Elantra key fob. Something to note is that the trunk button only unlocks the trunk gate if the car is locked. It does not unlatch where you can just walk up to the car and lift it, nor does it automatically lift the trunk gate for you. You still have to press the little button in the handle to unlatch it afterwards. Let's start up the car. Another way to start the car is remotely using the My Hyundai app. You'll need to download the app and set up an account. The car will need to be locked before you can remotely start it. Choose your remote start settings, input your PIN, and a remote start request is sent to the car. While we are here, let me point out that all four corners of the car feature LED bulbs. Lastly, I'd like to say that the car drives very well and handles confidently. The safety tech such as lane keep assist, radar cruise control, and front collision mitigation are great additions to the standard offering from prior years and these are not necessarily standard on some competitors. Thank you for tuning in and please check back, I have some ideas for future videos. Take care.